The construction of the interior of an incinerator is designed to efficiently burn waste material, converting it to ash and gas at safety, operational efficiency, and compliance with regulatory standards. Let's start with the combustion chamber. The combustion chamber is subdivided into the primary and secondary chambers, where both of these chambers are constructed from high temperature resistant materials, usually refractory bricks or castable refractory concretes, to withstand temperatures between 800 degrees Celsius to 1,200 degrees Celsius. The loading door on an incinerator is designed for the safe and efficient insertion of solid waste materials into the combustion chamber. This door's operational mechanism involves a pneumatic actuator. The inclusion of a pneumatic actuator allows for the automated opening and closing of the loading door, ensuring a controlled and secure method of loading waste into the incinerator. Integrated with the pneumatic actuator is a micro switch, a small, sensitive switch that provides an additional layer of safety. This micro switch is designed to prevent accidental opening. Additionally, the incinerator is equipped with an ash door, which serves a different but equally important purpose. The waste oil WO tank is a critical component of the incinerator system. Designed to promote the effective storage and agitation of its contents for uniform homogenization, a piping arrangement is also available for transferring waste oil from the engine room. To optimize the separation of oil and water, thus enhancing the incineration process's efficiency, heating elements are strategically installed. These elements, powered either by steam or an electric heating system, equipped with a temperature controller, precisely regulate the waste oil's temperature and increase the process of oil and water settling. Moreover, the tank is outfitted with level alarms for both low and high levels, ensuring the system operates within safe parameters. These alarms play a crucial role in preventing the tank from running dry or overfilling. Additionally, a drain valve is incorporated to remove any accumulated water, maintaining the oil quality and preventing emulsification that could hinder the incineration process. To further ensure the waste oil is in optimal condition for incineration, a sludge or mill pump, complete with valve arrangements, is installed. This pump's primary function is to initially mix the waste oil, preparing it for efficient and effective incineration. Some incinerators have agitators to properly mix the waste oil. A diesel oil tank is commonly installed in the incinerator. This setup varies across different installations, with some systems equipped with a delivery pump that facilitates the transfer of diesel oil to the incinerator. On the other hand, some installations rely on a gravity feed system. This simpler approach utilizes the force of gravity to move diesel oil from the tank to the incinerator. Starting the operation of an incinerator, especially when burning sludge, involves a series of precise steps to ensure the process is safe, efficient, and environmentally compliant. Begin by draining any accumulated water from the waste oil tank. This step is crucial to prevent water from interfering with the combustion process. Agitate or circulate the waste oil within the waste oil storage tank to achieve a uniform consistency, enhancing the combustion efficiency. Ensure that the inlet and outlet valves of the diesel oil tank leading to the incinerator are open. Open the valve from the waste oil tank to the incinerator. Remove any ashes and residues from previous combustions to prevent obstructions and ensure a clean combustion environment. The incinerator is equipped with a burner arrangement with a supply fan to supply air, essential for maintaining an optimal combustion environment. A pilot burner is utilized for initial ignition ensuring a controlled start to the combustion process. Once all pre-checks are carried out, select the appropriate program on the control panel, setting it to sludge burning mode. This configures the incinerator for the specific requirements of burning sludge. Upon starting, the flue gas fan activates automatically, creating a vacuum pressure within the incinerator and cooling the brickwork to prevent overheating. 
the primary burner undergoes pre-purging to clear the combustion chamber of any gases. Following the initial setup, the burner fires, with the primary burner control programmed for a slow heating system to avoid thermal shock to the incinerator's bricks. The process continues until the secondary chamber reaches a temperature of 650 degrees Celsius, necessary for effective sludge combustion. At this stage, sludge is injected into the chamber at a controlled rate, facilitated by a pre-programmed dosing pump and draft air damper control for temperature optimization. A PID, Proportional Integral Derivative System, controls the burning process for optimal efficiency. Once the required temperature is reached, allowing for the incineration of sludge alone, the primary burner stops and the sludge burner continues independently. If the temperature drops, the primary burner assists until optimal conditions are restored. This procedure underscores the complexity and precision required in operating an incinerator, particularly when handling materials like sludge.